Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, everyone. Hi, we're going to get started in just a minute. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Looking good, Jacqueline, over there. <laughs> How's it going? Okay. Good. Awesome. We're just going to wait a couple minutes before we get started here. Hopefully the weather is lovely where everyone is. Oh, wow. From Italy. Um, okay, great. So let's get, get rocking and rolling here. Um, so welcome, welcome. This is a very special edition of Office Hours where we're kind of bending our rules a little bit, doing a combo deal. Um, everybody, welcome Jacqueline McCarthy from 1% for the Planet. Say hi. Yes. <laughs> um, so we're really excited about this partnership. We've been working with 1% um, for almost a year, believe it or not. Um, really learning from them. Um, I'm from Burlington, Vermont, originally. Their headquarters is in Burlington, one of their headquarters. So it's kind of cool <laughs> in that way for me, because you know this is like part of my my culture and my my blood. Um, and yeah, and so today we're really going to focus on the story that One Percent tells and how they tell it, um, and what we've learned from them and and um, what they've learned from us at the same time. So. Um, and we want to remind you guys to pop in the chat, ask questions the whole time. We'll, we're all around. We'll be psyched to answer them. Um, so yeah, take it away, Jacqueline. Awesome. So as Kate mentioned, um, I work for 1% for the Planet. I'm the communications coordinator with, um, there, and we've been working closely with lately just on how we can you know, increase our engagement and boost our social media and really you know, tell that story to our audience that we want to. Um, so through this webinar that we have created, um, we have funds on I one percent. We were doing a lot of promotion and a lot of telling people why they should join one percent, and realized that. A lot of the people that were already following us um, already bought into our brand. They already wanted to do something for the planet. Um, and what we needed to do was really just show them what we do rather than telling them what they should do. Um, so why we um, let's just stop right there. Let's let's capture that for one second. Like I was just thinking about the office. Remember when they took pictures of their wedding, um, like the fake pictures. Like you just, that's a great quote is to, to show people what you're doing rather than tell them what they should do. Yeah. So I think that's something that everybody always forgets. Um, it goes back to, I was a fiction writing major. And so it's the show don't tell, right? It's, and it's really hard because it's our nature as humans to, to do the telling. Um, but the showing is what makes the story, right? Um, and let's talk about some different ways that you can, can show. So do you want to do, um, I, I know you've got some great examples here that you want to, uh, walk us through a little bit, Jacqueline. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of, I think it was probably one, on one of our first calls together that um, you had mentioned just, you know, people want to see also not only what 1% is doing, but who 1% is. Um, so we work more on just like showing them who our staff is, who they're working with, with 1% for the planet. So I just um, noted a couple of posts here, you know, posts from our climate retreat or our um, staff retreat last week. Um, and just noting our CEO out of the office. She's out there running for the climate. She's not necessarily behind the desk and just so people can get familiar with who we are. Fantastic. Yeah, and like some of the showing is as simple as um, like that, that photo of, of, it's Kate, right? Yeah. That's her CEO. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the name for CEOs. And it's just so human. It looks so casual. It doesn't look like it was staged um, because she's looking back. Obviously, she's doing something cool out there. Um, and then, like you said, like looking at the human staff retreat, which we were just talking about before we turned on live. Um, it's just good to know that, that you guys do the same things we do. We're about to have our staff retreat, actually. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so, I mean, in the, in the, some of the things you're doing here, just to give people some, some cues, is you've asked who's with us, which I love too, because like, of course, who's not raising their hand? Like, we're, we're with you. We're with you as 1% for the planet partners um, and, and what you do and what you stand for. But we're also with you as people who work and who want to <laughs> have some relaxing time. I want to go to the lake. That looks awesome. Um, yeah, you know, Josh clearly is in. Yeah. So um, these are the little things that you guys have been doing that are so, they're so small, right? It's so easy to do this kinds of stuff. Um, to get that inclusivity feeling, which I think is especially wonderful for 1% because you've got a mondo task here, right? <laughs> I mean, essentially, not to, not to sound, you know, histrionic, I guess, or whatever, is it's save the planet, right? <laughs> Let's save ourselves. That's a, that's a large goal. Um, <laughs> seems a little overwhelming, right? But what you're, what you're able to do, Jacqueline, is to be able to take that down and make it accessible to me, one individual, about how I can participate, even just by being connected to you with, with even this simple question, who's, who's with us, right? Suddenly, Absolutely. I feel like I got I to gotta, uh, leg into your world. Yeah, exactly. It's who supports us, not who's going to open their checkbook for us. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, cool. Cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, this is just some other examples, some fun examples of, you know, making our staff accessible even um, at our global summit. We had a lot of members in the room, a lot of brands, and of course we wanted to plug them on social, um, but we also wanted to, you know, show people who our staff was, let them get to know us. We have a picture here with our founder, Vaughn Chouinard, who's pretty well known as being the founder of Patagonia as well as 1%, but also just fun pictures of our staff trying the food. Um, you know, here we have our brand manager, also a snack expert, sneaking some snacks. Um, our graphic designer trying the Patagonia's new launch of their beer. Um, so just fun ways where they can see that it's not just an email address um, that they're getting or someone um, behind a computer, but these are the people who actually work for 1%. Kind of giving people that all access pass. Yeah, and you know I'm a big fan of that, right? So X Radio, so um, giving people access to the green room. Even, you know, we got a little bit jaded, of course, but it was still exciting to bring a guest. You bring, you bring your plus one and you bring them backstage and um, there's still like this feeling of like we're cool or something like that, which is exactly what this is all about, right? So it's just giving people an understanding um, of what it takes to be 1% of the planet, what it takes to wield the power you have, um, which is, you know, no small feat, and to know that there's humans doing it, right? So um, none of it is trivial. It's all very humanizing. That's what we're saying here, right? Absolutely. What I like too, Jacqueline, about what you've done is the voice is really clear. Sorry, I go back to Eric. I, do, I love it. Like, um, these quotes are so great. Mm, it's really good. Wow, that is fresh. Um, mm, wine, right? So like, um, again, just like humanizing it, giving us that access and um, making me feel less like you're selling to me, really. Like these don't feel like commercials to me at all um, because the photos, um, the, the photos, the fact that they look casual and not staged, the quotes that you're using, you've still got your branding all over it. Exactly, Katie, keeping it fun. Um, yep, <laughs> Rob, I was talking to Rob on LinkedIn, the zag effect, right? Like going, don't zig, zag. <laughs> uh, would you guys do super, super well here? Um, and, you know, let's talk a little bit about some more ways you can give people um, you know, that all access, like we're doing it right here, me and you right now. Um, so like, you know, we're, we were talking before this, like about um, lighting and like what we look like on camera. <laughs> I was joking, I'm putting on my makeup right now. You were like, I just did that in the bathroom here at work, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is important. I was telling you, I was like, if you lift your laptop up a little so the camera is above you, like that's, Oh, yeah. the potter, you know, right? <laughs> yeah, I've got my laptop propped up on a box of Sunski sunglasses we've got in the office. So they're, they're going to good use. They're going back to the planet. 
There you go. There you go. And so, yeah, we wish, we, you know, we'd love to know too if there's if there's ideas that you guys have in the chat that you want to pop in that you've used to kind of help um, give your customers or give your targets target target prospects or your network feelings of that ask a, um, access idea. Like, feel free to drop that in because it's good to to, to share these things. Um, and by the way, I love the ladies man <laughs> comment. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think he walked, he walked into our global summit and uh, at the time last year we've hired a couple more guys on staff as we expand but um he walked in and I think it was just our COO John who's the only man there and he was just like how did this happen and uh, so we, we hired the best and he's like well obviously <laughs> obviously it's great yeah it's great it's great <laughs> cool awesome um, so I just noted here, I mean, we have like 2000 members in our network and it's always fun as I'm like interacting with them on social, just seeing who else does this really well. You know, these are some of like our biggest members, our funnest members, and they, um, you know, in their social, this isn't just the products they sell. This is just how they relate or tell, you know, who they are, what kind of quirky stories they are. Like Sunski always puts out the funniest posts, randomly has these guinea pigs in a in a speedboat, um, <laughs> uh, people who are sending in pictures of them and their product as, as means, you know, Patagonia is um, always talking about, you know, what you can do in the climate strike. They're not necessarily promoting their new winter jackets, um, but anything from, you know, all good promoting their staff retreat. I think there's a lot of cool ways we see our members doing it as well. Yeah, and one thing you know, I know you guys are really good at is is sharing your members and 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 vice versa, and that's something that's so important, right? Like we all know that community, whether it's nonprofit or for profit, um, is not only beneficial to the people in, within the network, but of course the business itself, right? And so one of our goals, just like yours, is to to keep that community alive, keep it energized. Um, and one way to do that is by exactly what you're doing here. You're giving them some love on a, on a higher plane. <laughs> I feel like Steve Winwood for a second there, <laughs> Lord. Um, um, but you can do that in so many ways, right? You can um, put them in slides in a slide deck. You can share their content online. You can give them shout outs um, in, in chat, that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's like, what's good about that is I know, you know, is, is, they usually will share in, in kind, right? It's the golden rule type of thing, yeah. right? So um, that's There's a lot what of love you in our want. For sure. I think people are, yeah. excited, especially these bands telling their story, I think is a big part of the um, benefit of being a 1% member is you're doing a bit more and it. You're doing more than selling product. And a big thing about their storytelling often comes down to, well, we sold this pair of sunglasses, but it actually went to save the waves and here's what we're doing in our community. And it, it becomes a bigger story. And I think it's a really symbiotic storytelling relationship between our networks, which is really cool to see. Yeah. I mean, you guys are so lucky because this story is, is built in, right? Like there's, there's, um, and by story, we can just stop for a second, kind of clarify that, but um, because I think it's a, it can be a jargon thing that we tend to throw around as marketers. Right. Um, but by story, I mean, what I mean is emotion. Like, what are you doing to evoke emotion from me and to make me react um, in a way that is very targeted? Like you're trying to get me to do something as either a consumer um, or a participant or community member, right? Let's be honest. It's not just to be nice. <laughs> um, so what are you doing? What do you want me to do? And how are you making me feel so that I will do that for you, right? That's what we're always thinking about. Absolutely. Um, and that has to go with like every, every piece of text you, you, you write, and I'm sure we're going to get to um, some good examples here soon, yeah. but like whether it's a link or a share or a retweet, like you have to think um, pretty macro, like what do you want from this particular show, social post and what's, what are the, what's the call to action to do that, but then also what's the value. So that's the emotional piece too. There has to be a reason for me to do the thing you want me to do, right? Yeah, and I think that's always the power of like telling that story is really, it's the connection you're making with people that make them yeah. want to or make them want to act. You're awesome at that. <laughs> I was going to say, so as we, we thought about our story, um, and when I started and we were doing a lot of product promotion or, you know, telling people, as I mentioned, we were using a lot of like marketing speech, like give, like give back to the planet because X, Y, and Z when 
In reality, people follow us because they like what we do, they wanna see what we do. So realizing that our story is really like our network in action. People wanna see, you know, like who's doing what, what, where does that money go to? Where do these products and brands give back to? Um, so whether, as you can see here, whether it's our staff out at Climate Strike, um, out here in Burlington, or um, a member doing a beach cleanup um, in England, or all the way to Rwanda, and our um, a couple of our members giving back to an organization that builds school for women. It's it's those kind of things, not necessarily just that market speak, but it's that really authentic story of what's going on in our network. And so, you know, around that, like, as, as a nonprofit organization, you know, sometimes your goals are a little bit different than a for-profit. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> hello, there's like, it, I love that Italy is in our life right now. Hi, David. Hi, hi Nazim. Um, so let's talk about that. If there's a difference, like, what is the difference between like, what are you, what is your, your goals out there? Like, what's your objective? It's not to get more customers, right? Yeah, in a way, it's it's to get more people to join or to 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 join our network, obviously, um, and to realize what they can do to give back. Um, and so it's setting those examples as we use it on social of of what our network really does, so people can envision themselves doing it or realize how easy it is to give back. We can tell them it's super easy. It's just one percent of your sales or of your salary. It sounds super easy, but it's easy when you can. It's easier to convince people when you show them what people are doing and people just like them or organizations just like them are um, giving back and making that commitment for sure. I love that. Yeah. So that relatability is so big for you, right? It's not only to get, get, get awareness and get more people involved, but to get them to realize how easy it is to participate. Um, and so when you know, this sounds again, so pedantic, but it's so overlooked. Like when you know what your objectives are, then you design everything around that, right? Exactly. Um, one of the things that's sort of easy to do is to like just write that down. <laughs> I think yeah. people forget, <laughs> companies forget. <laughs> um, stick it on your laptop. Like it's nice if it's on, you know, somebody's mission statement somewhere, but you don't see that. So, um, you know, make sure it's above, above and beyond or, or above and in your face where you can see it all the time and, and check yourself on that, right? Is what we're doing today in this second adhering to those objectives. Absolutely. And, and this next slide just kind of goes into that, what we've already talked to, kind of as one of our number one takeaways is, you know, be interesting. What do your, what does your audience care about? You know, that was us like rethinking, like, they've already bought into us. They know what we do. They want to see it. Um, you know, and staying on brand being yourself. So we switched up and this is kind of just a, a look at what we've put out in the past couple months of just, you know, those people want to see our network in action. They want to see those nonprofits working. They want to see who's a part of it, like Alex Honnold, someone who just joined, um, a big influencer for us. And, you know, they want to see pictures of us in the outdoors, you know, what they're working to protect. So those are kind of the directions we, we went in just based on what we're passionate about as well. Cool. And, and somebody wants to know actually how long 1% has been around doing their work. Um, actually, almost, um, almost about 20 years. I, I believe it was founded um, in 2002 by Avon Chouinard and Craig Matthews. So it's almost, we're coming up on our, our 20th year anniversary, I think, pretty soon. It's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's really cool, just like in the past year that I've been here, being able to see kind of the evolution of where it's gone, where it's been, and, and all those members who have stuck around and are still doing awesome work. Nice. Um, and so I just want to pause on this one, one thought here, the be interesting. Like, um, I think, you know, that's something that everybody, of course, wants to be, but they forget how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and one, the easiest way is to, to be human, um, which, which means often being imperfect, um, less polished, not being afraid to be, you know, like a little mistakey or um, normal, like that's what makes you and your brand accessible. And so I just want to encourage companies um, to, to test those waters out, you know, maybe they don't put on makeup, like sometimes I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of a big deal. It's like 1% for the planet, I'm putting on some makeup, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I'm going to save the planet, I'm going to look good, you know? <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, but I think it, it's as simple as that. So being interesting, you don't have to be a Nobel Peace Writer, you don't have to be Elon Musk. 
Um, you can just be a normal person, but th what oh, makes yeah. you interesting is, is what you reveal. Absolutely. Um, kind of going right into that is, um, you know, personalizing your post, like the copy, perfect segue, it's like she knew it was coming. <laughs> um, is that copy that goes with it or that, what you're telling your, your audience and um, just really writing. One of the biggest things we talk about, I think, with lately is just writing like you would talk, be approachable, don't be super polished. You can use, you know, the language you use in everyday life. Um, so there's just a couple examples I outlined. Just really talk. You can talk directly to your audience um, rather than, you know, acting as if you're just a brand or you're a computer. I love these examples, especially. I mean, you can tell because they're, it's definitely a little bit the way I, I roll. Um, you know, so whether it's badass, because like that's a term I say, but something colloquial, right? It doesn't have to be, it could be anything like that, but using that kind of colloquial or, or vernacular um, in your writing, people, people tend to make writing very stiff, you yeah. know, so one of the things you and I talked about, um, and we've talked about this um, on office hours before, is to just say what you wrote out loud, and if it feels weird, it is weird. That is a great, I'd say, great takeaway. I'm sure my, I'm sure our open office is going to love that when I start reading all of my post captions out <laughs> Like, did that feel like <laughs> yeah, they'll love it. Yeah. You know, um, the great Anne Hanley does that. So if anyone's, you know, ever feeling embarrassed, um, you, you know, you're, you're really not alone. It's a, it's a great chick. Um, and the other things I wanted to point out here, because it's fun to get technical so people can get real takeaways. Um, so what's, what's great about 1% is their logo alone has the number one and the percent in it. Um, and they use it different ways depending on, you know, different kind of arenas. But whenever you can use the number and the percent sign, it gets an instant visual kind of flag for people at, among other things that are going around. So that's pretty excellent that it's, it's built in. Um, and then the way there's short sentences here. So um, I, what I like is we're helping to be the change, period. But we need you, come your family, your friends, or your coworkers to be part of the solution too. So that didn't have to be two sentences, but it is, which I like because it is how you talk. And so you're forcing me a, a pause there. Um, and I like that it's doing an emphasis on what the call to action is. One thing I would, um, don't hate me, but one thing I would recommend is to 86 the word need out of your life um, because need means um, needy team. No one wants to be in the needy team, right? So. <laughs> Give that a shot, see how it works. It's hard because I, I try to do it all the time. I, I write, I'll be writing, I need you to do this for me. I'm like, wait a second, you know? Um, so that's, yeah, 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 right. It's, it's a weird, I was in, I did, um, I was in public radio for a little while as well. So um, I remember doing fundraising and that was a great tip somebody, somebody taught us. Um, I also like here how you said, we'll prove it. It's such a great, um, it's kind of like, it's not a call to action, but it's like a call to arms. Yeah. Right. So you're maximizing, you're just like getting greater and greater here. Um, and then it's cool. And then the other thing that is really interesting, guys, try this. They wrote out their entire URL. Like you don't see that anymore because it's all short link city, you know, mm -hmm. and it really stands out. Um, there's good branding there. Better, better, like slash better, mm -hmm. better. It's all there. Mm -hmm. um, so hooray, like awesome. Yeah, yeah they're awesome. Cool. Um, Cool. Yeah. Um, so this is, we're actually, I think, pretty lucky in this, in this realm of connecting to a broader network of interest. Our network's pretty big, so it's, it's easy for us to do to, you know, be tagging our members or to be calling attention to a bigger issue that our network really um, values. Um, so just a couple examples here is just knowing, um, you know, knowing what's trending among your network knowing what your network cares about and um, just using those to promote those shared values and making those connections. Um, like recently with the Amazon rainforest and the fires happening there, that was huge in our network. We got a lot of you know, inquiries on, on what can I do, looking for our expertise on who to partner with to, to help this. So um, just utilizing that to really show people and, and creating a social post out of that or creating a blog post out of that to be like, this is our expertise, like we hear you, we also care. Um, and using that to, um, you know, connect with our audience further. And um, that was really, we saw a huge amount of engagement on that post, as you can imagine, as well as other causes. Wow. Like um, our conservation never hurts to post a dog in a picture either. That always really gets people going. <laughs> um, but showing. <laughs> the dog. 
and um, you know, <laughs> promoting those shared values for sure. That's a great trick. Um, you know, it's funny because a lot of times during these sessions, people have cats and the cats like walk over in the keyboards, you know, and oh, yeah. they get nervous. And I'm like, dude, leave that in. It's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes you real. It makes you real. It's that human connection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and by the way, one easy way, I know this is going to sound old, old lady or whatever, but like, is to watch TV. <laughs> um, so watching TV just for me, because I never watch TV. So once in a while when I do, like, I feel like I get a huge understanding of like all kinds of things that are going on, like even movies, I didn't even know that they were out or whatever. Um, so it's a great way just to get a quick immersion into what's happening in the world. <laughs> but maybe you didn't know about because you're stuck in your own insular, you know, your little bubble. it's easy to get stuck in that bubble. It's easy. I think yeah. sometimes I watch it and like, wait a minute, not everyone cares about the environment. I'm on my social channel all day long. <laughs> right? Yep, exactly. Change it up. <laughs> um, this is actually really big for us um, and something we really um, look to doing a lot this year um, was increasing partner advocacy or even employee or member advocacy. And it's, as Kate mentioned earlier, it's, you know, sharing that love, tweeting or posting about one of your members, your partners, um, and your consumers. Um, and in return, you see that kind of symbiotic relationship, but just as, and I'm sure Kate, you have a lot to say on this. And I think this is, you know, something that's really big right now. Um, but just as we get new members, you know, every day, we always encourage them to promote that they've just joined. It's a great thing for them to do. It's them telling their story of what their brand st uh, stands for. And just today, Four Oceans just joined our network. So um, we're seeing a lot of love around there. And so that's just their um, announcement video. It was really great, great, impactful video of a drone shot of them doing a beach cleanup. Um, and then obviously Alex Honnold joining our network was huge for us. Um, and we saw that advocacy tenfold there. I mean, it was great. We got a lot of engagement when we posted about 1% about um, Alex joining our network. People were really excited about it. Not as excited about it as when he posted. <laughs> when he posted, I think <laughs> it was like a thousand new followers like that hour versus when we posted, we were like, you know what? Like 1,500 likes is pretty good for us. <laughs> like he got yeah. 400,000 views. That's incredible. <laughs> That's so incredible. I mean, so there's, you're bringing up so many great points, right? So there's piggybacking on other people that have a larger ne network than you, right? Which is what happened there. Um, and, the, and the power of, of that individual. So, um, you know, this, this happened maybe by accident with you guys, or maybe you engineered it, but, but these things can be engineered. I want people to know, you just ask. It's really much that simple. We've done it, right? Um, and so I want, you to want to encourage people to identify those influencers and, and literally ask them to share your content or share, um, talk about you on your behalf. Um, this advocacy piece is huge, right? Someone asked about um, a question, what tools do we use to assess what's trending in your network? Um, and just to, you know, talk about lately a little bit, because, you know, hey, it's part of my job. Um, <laughs> and the partner advocacy piece is, you know, one thing we work with our customers as well. So, um, so lately um, helps looking at trends in the network, which is just a question from Rachel. Um, we have a feature that can identify different hashtags and different keywords that are trending literally like what are your highest engagement engagement posts if those contain those things. Um, and it's really handy because you can let our artificial intelligence learn from them. So you can actually start to curate how um, the AI starts to help you and what you want to pay more and more attention um, to. But with the partner advocacy piece, what we've been doing is working with customers. We know this is true, 40 to 70% increase in, in traffic or ROI when everybody participates, right? It's all, I always forget this metaphor, but it's like the all tides lifts the boats, you know, thing, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, so when everyone is working together, and so um, what we do is we, we help customers broadcast on the behalf of their employees, um, so recommending content um, and letting them edit or share it and put their voice on it, but in a way that they don't really have to think about it. Like they want to participate, but they're like, oh, I don't want to sound dumb. I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, so that's where Lately kind of comes in. And I know we're running a little bit long, but I think this crowd is cool with that. So we'll try to We'll wrap it up, but we're going to just keep going for a few more minutes. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. 
Cool. Yeah. Um, and this is just kind of one of those examples, as Kate said, if you can, you can ask for that from, from your network. And this was one of the, our big campaigns this year. And it's kind of become like a slogan for us is this be 1% better campaign where I love it. Kind of our, our members pretty closely on this and actually created this suite of assets to help them tell their story that they could use. They can use our logo. They can use social media ad assets that were really just plug and play for them um, where they can put in, we, provided video content for them to use, provided um, all of these plug and play assets where they could tell their story. So this was um, something that we saw a huge amount of interaction and engagement on from our network. People were happy to you know, tell their story and it was a cool way for them to show what they do and how they give back. And also a great way for us to you know, engage with those members we don't see every day. Yeah, I mean, this is so smart. And like, what I love about this is your logo is in it, right? This is branding 101. Your logo is in it. The call to action can change to accommodate every everybody shred, restore, bleed, reuse, right? So, so you get a verb telling people and like better, who, who can't be better? Everybody can be better, right? It's like the, it's like your own um, ice bucket challenge here, right? Like so, so easy. Um, and it makes you look at this, everyone on, on this, on this, webinar is looking at this probably thinking, of course I can do something, you know, you can think about it yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, it's and if so simple. Cool member videos that we, we also weren't even expecting, we're like, we're going to put this out into the world. We'll see what comes back. And everyone was really excited to, to tell that story. We got a couple from like our, um, we have a really cool member Bodhi surf. Um, it's like a surf retreat camp down in Costa Rica and they, without us really even asking anything created, an awesome like surf video of showing them what they do. And it was just a really great way to get the branding out there, but also for them to be able to share what that means when they have that 1% logo on their product or on their website. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. I, I have marketing envy, hashtag marketing envy right yeah. now. So <laughs> cool. cool. Um, obviously one of the main things you can do, um, Kate, I'm sure you have a lot to say on the matter. Um, <laughs> to increase your engagement, use your data that you're getting back. Use those, those analytics that tell you exactly what's working and what's not. Um, and I think that's a big thing that um, at least really helped us identify over the course of the year is like, hey, maybe, maybe don't do that. Maybe don't um, tell people, as I mentioned, what they should do and you know, start talking more colloquially or talking to your audience. And um, it helped us identify through like keyword resource or you know, what those effective types of posts are. Um, and then we can move forward and actually use that data to create new campaigns or create new, uh, new processes. Yeah, and what you're pointing out here is so simple, right? We forget to use this data in analytics. A lot of people collect it or they have some tools collecting it. Maybe they don't look at it or they try to look at it and they get dizzy eyes because they're like, I don't know what I'm seeing. Um, so we work really hard to try to make that data understandable um, and put, put it in new views for you. And one of them is the cloud tag you're showing on the right. Like, so mm -hmm. we're looking at the most valuable keywords, right? So what keywords were trending in your network and had yeah. the deepest engagement for you? Um, and, and they usually should be what you think they should be, right? Planet. Yeah. Hello, of course, <laughs> nonprofit. I love it. Um, the green is, is what's in your keywords and you already know about. Blue is other keywords that are trending high for you. And we're suggesting, hey, Jacqueline, use this more often because it's, this particular word seems to bode well with your friends, right? Um, something we see for us in our, in our own lately word clouds is thank you. That's a big one, right? Um, so people can, can, can try that on for size. But, um, you know, I know that data can be overwhelming for folks in general. And, um, you know, I just want to encourage you to, it's, it's obviously there, but if you're not using it, then you're, then you're just, um, you know, you're wasting your time. <laughs> right. So sounds silly, but it's a simple thing that you really got to pay attention to. Um, cool. Absolutely. Cool. And I think that's what we have for our points, but any, any final words, any tips and tricks on from, from lately's end on what people can start doing today? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so thank you so much. I just wanted to say that like, you don't have to be an organization as amazing as 1% for the planet to use these kinds of tricks into your um, marketing. You don't have to hire a big giant agency 
to do the stuff we talked about today. Uh, we've talked a lot about being human and being accessible um, with photos, with your words, um, just really speaking to people, as you said, Jacqueline, as though they were you, <laughs> right? Not some faceless entities out there. That's the most important thing um, is to remember that there's a human on the other side of, of everything, right? So um, we're happy to help in any way. You can reach out to both me and Jacqueline um, via all of our social handles that have been on all over the place here at Trilately um, at 1% for the planet. And um, thank you so much. This is, this is super awesome. And we'll have this recording too for folks. So if you signed up for the stream, you'll get the recording. And um, yeah, looking forward to, to more. Awesome. Yeah, I just want to say again, thank you for everyone who joined, but also to the whole Lately team. They're just hugely helpful in helping us put on this webinar and really just growing our social over the past year has been awesome and always learning new things. But awesome. Woo. All right, cool. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. See you next time.